Okay, so today we're going to install laminate flooring and I want to just get right to it, give you some tips that you need to know. It is an easy installation, but you just have to start out with the right direction and, and follow these tips. And please wait until the last tip. I don't see that in any videos that I see online and I think it's really important for a sound installation. But first, let's go over the tools. Very simple, you don't need a whole lot. Basically a scraper for prepping your subfloor. I like to use a big bar to take up tack strips if you have carpet. This is a beading block, basically just to collect the laminate flooring together. A rubber mallet. And this is basically just a glorified crowbar. Uh, it's just made so that when you have your edging pieces in, you can clip that laminate together. But these two tools are important to install laminate and specifically for laminate. It's also nice to have an oscillating tool. This is for cutting door jams or cutting anything that you need to slide your laminate flooring underneath. You can also just use a regular jam saw, but an oscillating tool will make it a lot more efficient and easier. A standard circular saw, and I'd probably say the absolute most important is knee pads. Uh, it can be very miserable if you try to do this without knee pads. As I get older, I absolutely need them. So invest in some good knee pads. Uh, you won't go wrong with that. Okay, so tip number one, acclimate the product in your home. Most of them need at least minimum two days in the space that you're actually installing. Crisscross them like this. I have some just one buys that are holding them up, but you want the airflow and the humidity of your room to acclimate this. If, if you don't, you can end up with problems and, and a lot more shrinkage and possibly gaps in the corners that you really don't want. So acclimate it. Uh, the ideal temperature is between 60 and 80 degrees and the humidity level between 35 and 60 percent. Now there is uh, specifications for your subfloor humidity level uh, and really the only way to really gauge that is with a meter, a moisture meter. Uh, we'll show you how this works but you basically use these prongs to inject you know in a wood surface and it'll give you a, a sensor on that. You want to be under 14 uh, percent of, of humidity on your subfloor. So if you're doing a new home or if you've done something where you know there's a lot of moisture in a home, double check it before you go installing this, uh, this laminate flooring. We're going to remove this carpet and I would just suggest if you start removing carpet, just put, cut it up into uh, manageable sizes. So you know, if you're a big strong guy, you know, maybe just do the whole room. But if, <laughs> if not, uh, maybe cut it up into more manageable sizes. I'm just going to go for about six foot or so. Just using a simple utility knife and I'm just going to score it down the length of the bed. I guess keep in mind if you're going to be putting this out to the street for your garbage man, if you make it too big they're probably not going to pick it up so make it manageable for them to get it into the truck. As far as the foam, depending on how old it is, it might be a nightmare getting up or fairly easy. This actually doesn't look too bad, it's not all flaking apart, but some of the old foam, you might get it up in just six inch pieces all the way around. So, Okay, so tack strips, nothing fun about them, um, but that's where a longer bar, so you're not like leaning over and kneeling the whole time, makes it a little bit easier. So I just like to use this big 36 inch bar. And just give me a little bit of leverage to be able to pry, pry these up. Okay, so for all these staples, you don't necessarily have to pull them out by hand. I just usually use a floor scraper and just wedge them out. You just want a nice, clean, flat surface. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to painstakingly take out the staples, you can, but it's a lot easier just with a little bit. Directions, it'll take those staples out. So you're going to want to cut this flush because you want this whole subfloor to be all on one surface. You don't want to have this step up here. So we'll just use our oscillating tool to cut that out. Okay, so what I like to do before I start sweeping everything up and get everything prepped is that you cut all, all the areas that I need to slide this floor underneath. So door casing, any type of area that I need to slide my uh, trim underneath. So what we have is our pad for reference for height and then 
just a, a spare piece of our flooring. We'll just simply take our oscillating tool. And cut that out. So now you have a nice clean look to the bottom of your trim. So if you are concerned about your subfloor, you can always use one of these meters. They're pretty simple to use. They just have little sharp points that you want to inject into the wood to get the reading. So we'll turn this on. This subfloor is in a condo that I know is pretty safe, but we'll just, we'll go ahead and check it anyways. So we're 7.4%. Seven seven you want to be under 14%. Anything over 14% you need to, to dry the area. But just let's take a look at this. This is, I spilled some water here earlier. This will be something that wouldn't be recommended to go over. This is such a small area, it's not gonna be a big deal and it'll dry out. Yeah, so it's, it's high. So that's saturated. So you hear that beep. That means it's, it's not, you know, you would not be able to go over this. Okay, so tip number two is to have a nice, clean, flat subfloor. Uh, it's a most of, most of the manufacturers are going to require your floor to be flat and within one eighth inch of difference in a six foot area. So I have a six foot level here and I'm just going to go over different areas in my room and make sure that it's flat. Basically any difference of an eighth of an inch I'm going to want to address. So right now this is probably about a 30 second, not a big deal. I'd say probably one of the biggest areas where you end up having crowning is where butt joints of the plywood come into play. So always check your butt joints because um, that's if, if any water saturation, especially on OSB happened, usually it swells at the butt joints. And to address this, if you, if you did have a lot of rocking and you had an eighth inch difference, you can always just take a belt sander and sand down that seam. But you wanna make sure that everything is within an eighth inch of level. Um, worst case scenario, you can always floor level the entire floor. Most situations, you just want to double check things. This would probably be a, a common area. Here's the outside door area. Water can be saturated around here. Just double check that this doesn't have a big, you know, bump coming around. Okay, so we're all within reason. The one other detail you want to pay attention to is that you need to have joists that are 16 inches on center and the subfloor has to be a minimum of five eighths of an inch. And that's the requirement. If you're, if you're going over engineered joists, you're going to have to, basically it's the deflection. You, you want, you, they don't want you to have a lot of bowing in between your, your joists. So make sure that they're 16 inches on center and you have a minimum of five eighths inch plywood. And if you have a trim saw, it makes it a lot easier to cut nice straight joints. One, right, one little pro tip is if you're doing a lot of this laminate flooring is to invest in a HEPAVAC that you can plug your saw into. This laminate stuff is very, very dusty. You do not want to be inhaling this stuff. So wear a respirator when you're, when you're cutting it and having a system where you can hook up the saw really helps out. One of the great things about this is that it actually has a plug port on it. So I plug the saw that I'm using and I put it towards the plug indicator. So then as soon as I go to turn to use my saw. So it's really convenient because as soon as I use the saw, the, the vacuum's already working. Okay, so the laminate flooring that I'm installing, not all of them require it, but the laminate flooring that I'm installing requires this, uh, this basically foam mat that you put underneath of it. It's basically a vapor barrier, uh, but there are some laminates that already have that integrated onto the laminate. So just pay attention to whatever you buy that you're using the right underlayment for your laminate flooring. So we're gonna install the first row here. And what I like to do, these, this, this uh, laminate or this underlayment has a, a sticky tab on it so that when I put the second layer on, it sticks to that. So I always start out with this underlayment with the sticky side against the wall so that when I layer my next one, it just sticks right to that. So we'll tuck that up against the wall. Right, 
So we'll actually just cut off this plastic strip since this is the first row. Okay, so tip number three is to, when you're laying out your laminate flooring, is that it's recommended to go perpendicular to the way your joists run. Not all situations are gonna maybe fit the style of which direction you wanna run this, but it is recommended to go perpendicular. So if your joists are running like this, in, in this home where they're going from left to right here, we're gonna run our flooring perpendicular to it. So always try to run your flooring perpendicular to the floor joist. Okay, so tip number four is on your first row is to cut the tongue off of the first side. Now this is really reliant on how much space your trim will be able to cover your laminate flooring. This particular flooring requires a 5 16th inch gap between any wall or any transition. So you wanna have a perimeter gap of five of a minimum of five sixteenths we plan to use a shoe mold we're not going to take off our existing trim so we're going to want this first row to be as close to the wall as possible maintaining that five sixteenth inch gap so cutting off this extra eighth inch tongue uh, will allow more coverage for our quarter round to cover the flooring So tip number five is to run a chalk line on the wall that you're going to be installing your first row of laminate flooring. You wanna make sure that your wall that you're going against isn't bowed or bowed out and making it tough for you to establish a nice straight line. So my recommendation is, is only putting one row of this underlayment down and then just measuring. I would probably stay away from the corners just to randomly find a measurement uh, maybe go a foot away from the edge of each each part of the room and then just make a mark. I'm just gonna make mine five foot. So this is just primarily for reference. And I'm just gonna double check my wall with a chalk line to make sure that I don't have any bowing and maybe I have to, you know, kind of space it out a little bit more to get a nice straight line. So five foot here. And go five foot there. Okay, then we'll just reference this line as we're installing the flooring and also just double check it just so I know what I'm working with right off the bat. So that's five foot there. You got a five foot here. Fifty nine and three quarter. Fifty-nine and seven eight. So that's all within a quarter inch. So it's just nice to know what you're working with before you start, so that when you shim against this existing base trim, that you have, um, you know, keeping everything straight in a straight line. Okay. So you want to maintain that five sixteenth inch gap at at any point. So the tricky thing we have here is that I'm trying. I'm only trying to use. Um, you know, shoe mold against here, but I also want to go further in here. So I'm going to have to measure this. So we got like five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to just mark my board here. So I'm butting up against here. So I'm getting five sixteenths here and I'm butting up against there. So we'll mark it right at the end of my casing so that this can slide underneath of my casing and also be five sixteenth inches away from the door. So we're going to take five eighths of an inch from this part down off of here so that this can slide over. Okay, so that's tight here. Got my 5 16ths, got my 5 16ths here. Now when you're always installing the first row, obviously the groove part needs to be showing this way. This way I can go ahead and clip my next piece into it. You always wanna start with the, the groove facing you and then you're always working left to right you want to have the groove on the right side so that when you clip in the new flooring you can clip it in this way you don't you always want to have your groove part facing you and then working from left to right so we also have a vent right here so i'm going to have to cut around that let's 
So I'll just mark this here. Pretty nice. Okay, so to put your first piece in, you know, you kind of have to do a little bit of an angle to slip that tongue in and then slide it down. Okay, so we'll mark to the edge of our trim here. So from this point over, we need to rip this down to allow this slide over. So we're gonna take that same 5 eighths of an inch from here all the way down so that this can slide further to the door. Okay, so from here we'll mark We'll actually go a little bit further in from where the trim is because there's, there's plenty of space to slide this in. So just as long as you're behind your casing, we just want to make sure we don't have any gaps around here. So we'll, we'll mark that. We'll be coming out. We'll make that like an inch and three eighths so that you have plenty of coverage underneath of it. So we'll cut an inch and three eighths. use this to tap this joint into place. It's not always a bad idea to every once in a while check your, make sure your shoe mold is going to cover the edge of this as well. Tip number seven is to use either a framing blade or a specific blade for laminate flooring. You don't want to use your nice trim saw blade for laminate flooring. It'll just ruin it by the end of it. You don't want to spend 80 bucks on a, on a trim saw blade and then have it you know, not be able to be used. But if you're using this stuff all the time or installing laminate a lot, they make um, blades that are specifically for laminate flooring. This will last 100 times longer than, than a trim blade. So always um, use the appropriate blade for cutting this hard stuff. That goes for the jigsaw as well. Buy blades that are made for laminate. This laminate is very tough on any of those regular carbide tips. So you want to use uh, blades that are, are made for it. So we'll change this out. Okay, so tip number eight is when you're installing this, you need to overlap each seam by a minimum of six inches. So either you're six inches uh, before it or six inches after, you can't have joints that are within you know, three or four inches from another. So always install this flooring so you have an overlap of six inches onto the next thing. The other thing you want to avoid is staircasing. You don't want to start basically every six inches and working your way out. I see way too many YouTube videos that have that. That is not recommended by most manufacturers. A random pattern is what's recommended. Uh, you want to avoid half patterns and you want to avoid staircasing. Staircasing is essentially just having boards that are six inches smaller as you go and then it just, you can go through the whole room. So you see step cracks all the way and, you know, you could basically see the seams all in a diagonal pattern. Uh, that's not recommended that the, the flooring can um, move in, 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 in irregular ways. So random pattern uh, really literally means that, but the biggest rule is just six inches away from each seam. So I just, I just cut a random piece that's 13 inches. Uh, after running three pieces, I usually like to run that uh, another one along with this. It kind of keeps everything together. So running two rows at a time uh, makes a lot of sense to me and it kind of uh, makes things a little bit easier to put together. So really simple to in interlock these. You're just gonna lift up slightly and make sure it's in the groove. You could always use this block uh, to make sure that's tight. So we're gonna have to make a cut again. Okay, so tilt this edge. You want to basically have this lip as close to this other joint as possible and then 
flip it down and then you'll have to snap this into place by basically hitting your block against it to snap in. Again, making sure all your joints are even. You really just wanna pay attention to make sure that all these joints are nice and tight, especially on the first couple of rows. This will really indicate whether you're going straight or moving. If this was slightly gapped here, it's gonna create a problem. You're gonna to wanna to shim this out a little bit more. Do whatever it takes to make sure these seams stay nice and straight. So for this area, we're gonna actually just, since this is just so much higher than the rest of it, we're probably gonna end up using a T molding that will be cut down to, to go against here. Cause this is, uh, this is basically an inch thick. This stuff is only five sixteenths. So I'm, I'm gonna have a trouble finding transitions that will basically raise up three quarters of an inch. So I'll probably end up using a T molding. So I'm just gonna, for right now, I'm gonna keep this three quarters of an inch away from the edge to give myself some room. You need the five sixteenth inch gap between whatever transition that you plan to insert in here. So we'll show this a little bit later, but for right now, we're just gonna cut around this and leave three quarters of an inch of a gap all the way around our uh, threshold here. So we'll measure this. We've got 20 or 19 and three quarter. So we'll make that 19 inches. So when I measure, I'm always going off the top laminate piece, not my tongue, because the tongue actually goes into that groove. So measure from your laminate piece, so we'll go 19 inches. So just check your chalk line and just make sure that, that we're gonna be even so that we have even place, spaces on the other side. So 48 and a quarter to 48 and an eighth. So we're within an eighth, I'm fine with that. So this is where this tool comes in handy. So you can slide it this way. So this is where it's important to reference your line because now we have to go around this and make sure that that side lines up with this. So I'm just gonna make sure my first row where I'm gonna have to be looks like 54 and a half. So I just wanna double check and make sure that when I run this, that will be 54 and a half to the edge of my piece here. So which is gonna be a rip down of like four and seven eighths. 54 and five eighths. I wanna say that was. 54 and five eighths, that should be, that should be all right. Yeah, Same thing here. I'm gonna to wanna to leave this a three quarter inch gap so I can get my transition up against her nicely. So six inches, so five and a quarter inches are gonna rip this down. Okay, so you wanna butt this up to the next layer and then to continue the vapor barrier, just take off this little sticky part of the plastic. Okay, now we got the first couple of rows in, we can pretty much really start getting ahead here. Now, I just wanted to reiterate what you wanna to try to avoid, and that is staircasing. Staircasing would be doing something like this, where you're having smaller and smaller pieces and you're basically creating a staircase. So you're having all this diagonal things. What you really want to do is have one here, or I should say, yeah, maybe, maybe do a smaller one here or go with a, with a wider one here, but you want to avoid having this diagonal pattern of the pieces coming together. You want to kind of immediately 
shrink it down and then come with a bigger one. You know, you want to just make sure you're not aligning all the joints all on the same area. You want to make them random. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very tempting to do a staircase because you can get like a whole bunch all done at once. Um, but it's really not recommended by the, the manufacturers. They want you to, to stagger those joints. Okay, so this is my last tip and it, it's super important. I'd never really see this in any videos online, but the manufacturers do require this and it makes sure that it, it's a long lasting uh, installation that you're not gonna have any problems. And that is to use a backer rod in the corners of all of the perimeter of your floor. This is gonna maintain that space that is needed for expansion and contraction. And then if you're remodeling, if like most who are doing this type of project, you're doing other things within the home and you wanna make sure that you keep all the perimeter joints clear of any debris, uh, drywall dust, anything that uh, might get in, in the way of allowing this floor to expand. So using a backer rod will ensure that. This is a three ace. It comes in a really large uh, box, 350 feet of it. So typically this is great for larger rooms. You can get smaller quantities of this stuff but again, really important to put this in your corners and keep that space maintained. So it's simply just use this. You just slide it into that, that perimeter gap that you made. You might need to use a screwdriver or something to, to press it in. But this is just gonna maintain that gap and allow this floor to freely float expand and contract and move around. Okay, so with this flooring, we're gonna do a transition between our ceramic tile and our floating laminate floor. Unfortunately, in this specific type of brand of laminate flooring, they only had T-molding. This was the only kind of transition they had. You know, they're kind of limited with transitions into different types of flooring, but this is primarily made to sit flat and basically transition between one laminate flooring and the other. But in this case, we're, we're gonna make this transition kind of ramp up to our, our ceramic tile. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I, I cut some smaller pieces of plywood here, and this is gonna allow me to just nail through here and then grab this uh, smaller piece of plywood. So I actually have a, a stapler gun. This will help hold these smaller pieces in much tighter than, than just regular trim nails. So you always want to still maintain that th uh, 5 16 inch spacing here. So just make sure that you have the spacing so this can move back and forth. This will turn to a clear, but I'm gonna use this silicone to adhere the transition on top of this strip. And I'll just use a matching wood putty to fill in for my staples. So if these tips help you out, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out to, for other viewers to find our videos. And if you have any questions, by all means, please leave us a comment below. We're here to help you out and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.